Wonderful good day, ladies and gentlemen. We are still at the Venko Resource Investment Conference and I'm now at the booth of Carminac. Yeah, very famous company working in the Yukon. And with me here is Tony Reda, the Vice uh, President of Corporate Development. Tony, That's hi, pleasure to see you. Pleasure to see you again, Johan. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time. Well, Carminac, very famous company, $28 million cash. You're doing very well. And I think you had a great um, yeah, development. Maybe you can comment a little bit on 2015. What were the highlights? Oh, great, great question. Well, 2015 was actually another remarkable year for Kamenak. You know, our share price, um, like other uh, junior explorer co's, you know, um, it uh, you know was flat, but for the most part, it, it, it held together. We were able to attract a very sophisticated investor, um, Electrum Strategic Resource oh. Opportunities Fund. Wow. They now own about 10.3 percent of the company. Yeah. Our existing large shareholders, which is Raw Speedy. Uh, Zebra Holdings, also known as the Lundin family, and uh, Jamie Horvat, which is a fund under the umbrella MNG. They all reloaded, so we raised about $22 million. We updated or published a NI43101 resource update, which um, converted a lot of our inferred ounces into the indicated category. How large is it now? Uh, the, the resource is a communal, it's about 3 million ounces in the indicated category. Lot, yeah. And what was interesting was that the grade actually went up. So usually in a resource conversion, you don't typically see the grade actually go up. So the tons went down, grade mm -hmm. went up, and that was the foundation for the feasibility study, which was just announced a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And it demonstrated very robust economics, Classic. even in the current depressed gold price environment. When you said the grades went up, yes. where are the grades now? Because you're doing heat bleaching. Yes, It means correct. normally the grades are below a gram or something. Yes. Where are you now? Yes, so great question. So your average heat bleach operation is usually sub, uh, sub a gram, about 0.65 mm -hmm. grams. Yeah. Well, our, P, our diluted mining head grade, so the grade that is in our feasibility study that we'll be mining, is 1.45 grams per ton. Oh. So that's more than double. Very so nice. that's, that's one of the key drivers for the robust economics. That, yeah coupled with our excellent recovery rates of 86.3%, mm -hmm. we're, um, we'll be one of the highest gold yielding heap leach mines in the world. Fantastic. Yes. Um, favorable economics is something what I really mm -hmm. like because mm -hmm. not that many companies have that. Exactly. Where are the all-in sustaining costs, or let's put yes. it that way, where are the all-in costs? Because yes. this is what I prefer, yes. honestly. Yes. Um, and because you should be profitable also in this environment. You, you did it like 1150, I think. You did yes. the study, right? So the For study, gold. yes. So the st we used uh, 1150 US yeah. gold price with a 78 cents exchange rate. Mm -hmm. So when you factor that into Canadian dollars, it's actually below spot. Mm -hmm. And our all-in sustaining costs, according to the World Gold Council definition, less corporate GNA was $550 an ounce. Oh. So, again, for a development stage heap leach project, one of the lowest all-in sustaining costs in the industry. Um, it gives us a very robust margin and allows us to move this project confidently in this environment. Fantastic. Where's the IRR? Uh, so if you're using the 1150, the after-tax IRR is about 37%. Oh, well, that's yes. after-tax. After-tax. That's pretty comfortable. Yes, yes. and at $1,000, well. it's 27% after-tax. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, also, the uh, annual production, I saw average like 180,000, 184,000 ounces, right? Yes. And in the first uh, first five years, you are well over 200,000. That's, that's, that's correct. That's right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's okay. exactly cool. correct. Um, what is the estimated capital? you need and uh, I mean you have sensational shareholders mm -hmm. how do you finance that yes a great question and this is obviously a, uh, a concern that a lot of shareholders have or potential investors because they've most companies when they reach that point when they have to do the project finance it's very dilutive so we're cognizant of that so our pre-production capital costs are 317 million Canadian and what's, what's really important when you go to finance is that you're going to look at your payback period. And our after-tax payback period is, is only two years. Again, very low, quick payback. Um, we're still about uh, two years out, so we're targeting Q2 of 2018 for construction. So we'll start looking at project finance, probably more aggressively the end of 2017. But given the robust economics and our strong shareholders, we think we can do a very traditional form of project finance that's a combination of debt and equity. Yeah. And that will allow us to keep the, uh, the dilution uh, on the low side, because our market cap right now is about $150 million. So we're in a, we're in a fairly doable, good position, yeah. yeah. And yeah, we still yeah. got some time for this gold price to turn around a bit more, perhaps. <laughs> and we desperately want it, yes, honestly, yes, because yes. otherwise we get totally depressed. Yes. And I cannot drink more red wine in the evening. That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, let's uh, get back serious. Um, what are, let's say, let's put it that way. What are the milestones and the highlights for 2016 your company wants to achieve? Okay. Well, great, great question. So we we have a great feasibility study now, which is going to be the foundation for um, we're about to embark on our permitting process. So um, we're targeting um, 
Q3 of this year to submit our first uh, project description. Mm -hmm. Then there's an adequacy review um, period, and after that, then we will be submitting our, uh, our water license application. So those are going to be two huge milestones. The feasibility was a huge de-risk. We're also going to dedicate uh, some dollars to exploration this year. Yeah. We've, you know, the upside at coffee is significant. It doesn't, we're not really scratching our heads where to put the drill. We have eight drill discoveries around the current mine plan. Yeah. Um, you know, having a discovery right next to the open pit is pretty remarkable. So we'll be spending anywhere from a million and a half to two million dollars Canadian this year on exploration. We'll be announcing formal budgets here, so that'll be a huge milestone. And now with the feasibility behind us, we're pretty excited. We're a very technically oriented team. So getting back to drilling, you know, I'm pretty excited about that because uh, I think we can add some ounces. Fantastic. Yeah. Super. Thank well, you. Add the ounces. Thank you very much and all thank the best you, for 2016. Hans. And let's hope this gold price turns quickly. It will. It will. <laughs> all right. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Tony. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, it was Tony Radar, the Vice President of Corporate Development from Kaminak. And uh, yeah, you heard it. Uh, $317 million. I think it's makeable. The company has $28 million cash, $150 million of market cap. And the drills are turning, so there will be good results uh, quite soon. The resource is near at 3 million ounces and uh, also the PEA was very favorable. You heard it also after tax IRR of 37%. I think it's really remarkable. This team has done a great job. Check out the company. Thanks and bye-bye from Vancouver. Thank you.